Are you tired of always starting and stopping your new fitness program or routine that you're trying to adopt? But for whatever reason, you keep going back to your old habits, you keep on playing video games, you keep getting lost on screens, and you stay in bed longer than you know you should every single morning. If so, by the end of this video, that'll be a problem that you look back on a year from now and say, man, I came a long way. I can't believe I used to do that. How are y'all doing? It's Aaron Alanis, CEO and founder of Basics. And in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing exactly how you can overcome laziness and finally get in shape and just take overall control of your life. Because when it comes down to my own story, guys, I've come from 220 pounds, overweight, insecure, out of shape, and just super, super, super down. And I had like the lowest self-esteem of probably anybody that I ever knew back then to being where I'm at now to where I feel pretty good about myself. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. And things are always kind of building up brick by brick. And the cool part about me kind of discovering these things within myself is that not only have I been able to help me, but I've also been able to help out countless men all over 28 states across the country and six other countries around the world. So check it out, okay? So first and foremost, I want you all to keep in mind that when it came down to me figuring these things out, it came from trial and error. I'm someone that's tried every single fitness routine out there. I've tried every single meditation out there. I've tried all these different kind of like mindset things and all these books here, guys. I had most of these books on my shelf back when I was overweight. So I was someone that was constantly looking at information out there. I was reading this book, reading this article, looking at all these YouTubers, and for whatever reason, I stayed stuck. I was always unhappy with the man that I saw in the mirror. I always felt like I had this greatness within myself, but I could never seem to unlock that because I was always so unmotivated to take action. I was so lazy. And it's not like I wanted to be unmotivated or it's not like I wanted to be lazy. You know, I had the right intention with where I wanted my life to go, but for whatever reason, I could just never do the work that I wanted to, okay? And in this video, we're gonna be solving it easy peasy, lemon squeezy, if you take action on these five things, okay? So number one, is the first mistake that I made, which, you know, if you're someone that was, you know, kind of like where I was at before, hopefully this resonates with you, okay? So you're more than likely focusing on trying to feel happy or not sad instead of trying to feel proud of yourself. And the only way that you're going to feel proud of yourself, guys, is by getting actual results, okay? So to break this down even further, I remember when I was trying to get back into the gym, I used to always think about how good it would feel to be fit but I was always kind of comparing that with how bad it felt to be overweight and that was where I was at at the time right so I was always kind of like dissociated between my current situation and my desired situation in the, in the future right so what this ended up causing guys is that this made it very hard for me to be consistent because I was either always too focused on the future or I was always too focused on the present and then my you know, actions were very inconsistent. And that's why I think that most of us men, myself included, you know, if we don't take control of our emotions and then we don't learn how to use those for our benefit, we can totally let that just you know, trickle down and, and ruin our performance with what we're doing, right? So here's the thing, guys. Instead of chasing happiness on the front end of your, your actions, chase it on the back end, right? Because it's... it's it's really hard for us as human beings to, to not be emotional because the way that we are wired, we're emotional creatures. If you all know anything about human nature and things of that you know, nature, right? We are very emotional, we are very erratic, and we are very just kind of like sporadic when you break down psychology, right? But here's the thing, guys. The trick isn't necessarily to turn off your emotions completely. It's about learning how to use them for your benefit. So whenever you start getting kind of you know frustrated with where you're at currently, you feel very unmotivated, you feel very sad or depressed or whatever the case may be, right? Use that as fuel because here's the thing, guys. It's it's one thing to feel bad about where you're at now and then take action in spite of that. That way you can improve your situation for tomorrow and the next month and the next year. It's a whole nother thing to feel unmotivated today and say, you know what? I'm not going to take action today. I'm just going to feel bad about my situation. And I'm just going to complain to the whole world about how tough how, how tough life is for me specifically, right? But here's the thing, guys, when you can do the things that you know you need to be doing, whether you feel like it or not, on a consistent basis, that in and of itself is going to make you feel proud of yourself. So it's not necessarily like you, you want to stop, you know, trying to feel happy or trying to stop feeling sad, but it's about, you know, chasing the right emotions. So start trying to feel more proud of yourself versus satisfied, okay? And here's the thing, guys, 
you're going to be much happier if you really break it down, if, if you're a winner at least, right? Like if you're someone that actually wants to be in shape and you actually want to change your life forever, you're going to feel much better on the back end of taking a hard action than you are on the front end of playing a video game and trying to beat some record that no one really cares about, right? Like life in and of itself is a video game. Fitness is a video game. When you break down calories, when you break down PRs to break, so on and so forth. So why don't you just play the video game of getting in shape versus the video game that's causing you to be out of shape and unconfident and unhappy with your lifestyle, right? Secondly, you have no routine. Each day is different than the last, and this is causing you to have a very up and down, again, inconsistent performance with what you're doing. Because here's the thing, guys. When it comes down to the highest performers in this world, all the highest performers in any profession have very strict routines. If you look at guys like Kobe Bryant, he was, no, he was known for showing up to the gym at 3 or 4 in the morning, shooting shots when no one else was there. And he was doing that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He didn't do that one day out of the week and the next day looks completely different, right? He was always trying to do the same exact thing every single day in order to make sure that you can line up as much perfect days as possible in order to have the best week as possible, okay? So here's the thing, guys. You can make winning simple by doing the same thing every day. I remember back when I was 220 pounds, I was overweight, out of shape, and I was trying to figure out a way to get unstuck and out of my situation. The only solution that I had was to figure out, okay, what does the perfect day look like for me? Do I wake up at 8? Do I wake up at 6? Do I wake up at 7? What time do I wake up ideally? And then once I pick the time, I just kind of, okay, this is the time I'm going to be waking up every single day. What does the perfect breakfast or like morning routine look like? Okay, well, I make breakfast, I, I do this, I do that, whatever the case may be. And then I built that perfect morning routine for myself. Following that, I ended up asking myself, okay, so what's the next thing that I do after that? Do I need to, do I start working immediately? Do I hold off for a little bit? Like, what does that look like? What time do I go to the gym? And then once you construct your perfect day, guys, all you want to do is just have as many of those as possible because a good year is comprised out of 52 good weeks and a good week is com comprised out of good is it you know six to six to seven days that are really really good out of your week okay so just keep that in mind guys like the small habits are going to start stacking up on top of each other and the small wins are going to end up turning into a big victory in the long haul because the macro is in the micro okay one big thing that i did back then was i started by adding small habits into my routine every single week versus trying to do every single thing at once, right? So like I was, I was mentioning earlier, when you build out your ideal day, don't just start by like waking up at four in the morning and then you're in the gym by five and then you're working from six to six and then you were, you know, like don't, don't do anything too extreme initially because initially guys, you just have to start building confidence slowly but surely. And the reason why it's better to start small versus going all in from one day to the next is because if you go all in from one day to the next and you're not necessarily mentally prepared to do so, you are going to start losing confidence in yourself by falling off track. And then the thing that most people don't talk about is that when you're trying to do too much too soon, you're actually going against your, your neurological patterns because we as humans are creatures of habits. And when you're trying to break, you're trying to change too much too soon, you're not giving your body you're not giving yourself the best position in order to start changing your life, right? So start small, start by just waking up at the same time every single day for a week and don't worry about anything else, right? In terms of your, the habits you're trying to adopt. The next week, try to go to the gym at the same time every single day, right? Following that, try to start finishing your, your foods within like 30, your, your food within 30 minutes for each meal, right? Following that and then just kind of start stacking up these habits that the best you sees. Uh, the best you see is fit for its lifestyle or his lifestyle, right? And just do that uh, long term, right? Number three, you're not feeding your vision enough. When you have a strong enough target, all the work that you're going to put in is irrelevant because let's face it, guys, fitness is hard. But you know what else is hard? Being mediocre, being out of shape, walking up the stairs, feeling out of breath only wearing certain clothes that you have in the closet because it kind of it, it, it hugs your stomach the wrong way feeling like you can't necessarily wear your suit that you had tailored or your, your collar shirt that you had that uh looked really good in pictures but then you know you gained 20 30 40 pounds and it just doesn't fit you the same way right so you just have to pick your hard guys like when it comes down to really building 
your best physique and when it comes down to building your best life and just optimizing your yourself as a man it's a hard journey guys but here's the thing when you can embrace the hard journey on the front end like we mentioned earlier you're going to feel happier on the back end than if you were to chase a short-term wins meaning the video games or the twinkies or the donut holes or whatever you're into the uber eats chipotle bowls like i've been there guys if you can start chasing the, the, the feeling that you're going to get after you do the hard thing versus the feeling that you're going to get by taking the easy way, you're going to be much better off in the long term. And you're actually going to feel better about yourself by doing the, the, the more challenging thing than settling for something that's going to keep you average. Okay, Because being average, guys, it's tough. And being great is tough. But I would much rather personally... Go through the suffering and the trials and tribulations necessary in order to become great with my physique and great with my finances and great in every other pillar of my life than to settle for mediocrity when I know I could have done more. Okay, so if you're anything like me, leave a comment below and I'd be, uh, you know, eager, eager to chat with you about that because there's not enough of us out there that are that kind of think like that. Right. A lot of people say that they don't want they don't want that to happen, but their actions say otherwise. Okay. So number four is you lack urgency because you're aware that it's going to take time. Here's the thing, guys. Don't confuse patience with laziness. Anything that you do, guys, is going to take longer than you more than likely think. I know that with a lot of the stuff in the fitness space, you say, hey, burn 10 pounds in a week. Or they talk about how to do this in 90 days or whatever, whatever. But here's the thing, guys. Like if you're really trying to change your life, you have to understand that time is going to be your best friend and your greatest enemy if you're someone that's impatient so if you're impatient you're going to see that it's going to take you a year or two or three in business to get to where you want to go like i'm from a business standpoint i'm about two and a half years into my business and i'm still like growing and hitting like certain milestones and targets me like it's harder than most people can kind of like think of right and when it came down to my fitness journey, guys, like it took me about a whole year in order for me to completely transform my physique, my mindset, my habits, my self-image, and other things of that nature in order for me to become the best version of myself. It wasn't a 90-day thing for me. It wasn't like a 16-week thing for me. Like you can change your body in that time frame, sure. And you can definitely like kickstart, you know, like the next season of your life by just looking different in the mirror. And then by then you can ideally speaking have more confidence, and that confidence can cause you to do you know, more riskier things with your career or this or that, whatever the case may be. But, you know, just if you can accept that it's going to take some time while still being aggressive, that's like the major key, okay? Because you have to be aggressively patient. I got that from Andy Frisella in Ed Milet. When you're on the pursuit of your potential, when this can be with your life, this can be with your health, this can be with your, with your, your business, this can be with anything that you're trying to do, okay? Because if you're just... If you're someone that says like slow and steady wins the race, like you're playing the wrong race because the people that are winning races aren't saying that. The people that are winning the races are feeling like their time is going to come any second, right? If it's like a business thing, hey, they're like, man, it's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen tomorrow. If it's a fitness situation, hey, tomorrow I'm going to break my PR. Tomorrow is another chance for me to lay another brick on top of the foundation that I'm building the rest of my life on. And if you're someone that can see the value in that, and you're able to really channel all that aggression into building yourself, into becoming the best version of yourself possible through fitness and through self-improvement, life is just going to be so much easier for you once you're at the top of your own potential, okay? And here's the thing, guys. One thing that a lot of people don't talk about is how much effort that you have to put in in order to break the cycle of hypnotic rhythm. So for those of you all that have ever, you know, like followed me on Instagram or anything, a big book that I'm really into is called Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Okay. Now, Outwitting the Devil is a book that Napoleon Hill wrote a long time ago about him interviewing the devil because he was kind of personifying the dark nature of himself. Okay. And this is a book that Bedros Kulian recommends and a whole bunch of other like self improvement guys out on your own YouTube that I look at personally. And one thing that the, the devil, quote unquote, in the book talks about is he mentions that there's this thing called hypnotic rhythm. And it's pretty much when someone gets in the rhythm of drifting and going in, in bad habits and not necessarily being super productive and they're always watching TV, 
They're always eating donut holes. They're always eating Twinkies or Uber eating pizzas every single day. And what this ends up causing them to do is they almost get hypnotized by the rhythm of drifting that they're in and they never achieve their potential. They stay asleep instead of staying woke, right? Shout out Mr. Childish Gambino, right? So what this ends up causing them to do is they waste away their potential. And this is one of the worst things that you can possibly do. And so many of us Americans and people, just men in general, right, are in this cycle of hypnotic rhythm. The only way to break it and the only way to stop drifting and the only way to finally use hypnotic rhythm for your benefit versus your detriment, meaning, you know, things that are going to work for you versus things that are, that are going to hinder you is to hit escape velocity. So for those of you all that are aware of the way that spaceships work is when it comes down to NASA, I'm here in Houston, so you know how it is. We out of this world over here, man. When it comes down to spaceships, they have to hit this thing called escape velocity, meaning that in order for it to break past the atmosphere, it needs to move at such a rapid pace. And regardless of the, the resistance that it's facing from the, from the air in the sky, it needs to just push past it, and then it can go a little bit slower once it's out of the atmosphere, right? And when you're trying to break a cycle of, of habits that aren't serving you, when you're trying to stop eating out all the time, when you're trying to stop staying in when you know that you should be going to the gym, when you're trying to stop these things that aren't serving you and your greatest you know, vision for the future like we were talking about earlier, you're going to have to literally force yourself to go as hard as you can in order to break that cycle. So when people talk about working hard, it's like, hey, working hard is cool, but really like moving as aggr aggressively as possible in the pursuit of your, your, your vision is really what's going to take you to the furthest extent possible. And here's the thing about hypnotic rhythm too, is that with this whole concept, you can actually use it to be a superpower for you. Because if we were talking about guys like Kobe Bryant earlier, and we could even mention Michael Jordan and Tom Brady, right? And these are guys that learn how to use hypnotic rhythm to their benefit. These are guys that were out here, you know, feeling like they were uh, working hard without working hard. You know, they were just, they felt like they were just going on about their day. When if you were to put a random stranger into their daily routine, they wouldn't be able to keep up. But these guys have been doing it for years on years on years and then stacking up habits on habits and different ways about going about things that working hard just became like breathing. And if you can ever make working hard towards your goals as easy as breathing air, it's going to be very hard for you to lose when working hard feels effortless just because that's what you're used to, right? And number five, you are not feeling your body properly. You are not active enough and you're not recovering well either. I know the other things we're talking more about habits and mindsets and just like vision and things like that. But when we're talking about fitness, studies have shown that when you, you know, reduce your exercise and your activity level, this can cause an increase in depressive symptoms. If you ever feel lethargic, meaning you feel lazy, if you ever feel unmotivated, you ever start questioning the meaning of life, you start trying to do all these crazy, uh, like, psychological things to yourself in order to get better. It's like, dude, what if you just went to the gym, right? Instead of going to the bar, why don't you go to the barbell and start lifting a little bit more? And maybe you'll start feeling a little bit better about yourself, right? When it comes down to what you eat, guys, you have to understand that what we eat as human beings creates us. So we literally are what we eat. Our cells in our body are comprised out of the foods and the nutrients that we consume. So when someone has been consuming Twinkies and donut holes and Gushers and all these other sweets out here, how can this person expect to feel energized and full of life when everything that they're eating is full of death and processed chemicals and foods and things like that that aren't good for the human body, right? And when it comes down to sleeping well enough, Guys, sleep is one of those things that if it was like a like a if sleep was like a performance enhancing drug and it came with all the benefits listed out for sleep, it would be considered one of the most illegal substances out there, right? But thankfully, it is something that our human body uses in order to recover and in order to just, you know, balance itself out with hormones and things of that nature, right? So here's the thing, guys. When it comes down to sleeping, Prioritize it as much as possible because sleep is not for the weak, it's for the strong. If you can learn how to manage your sleep routine, and again, some tips I give to my VIP students is to get seven to eight hours consistently night after night in order to improve your mood and reduce your stress. You can be in a cold, dark room, have pitch black sight, meaning have some kind of eye mask if you need to, have a weighted blanket if you need to also, and have some kind of like binaural frequency, meaning if you go online, you look up uh, bineural frequencies, I believe you can look them up as, 
And I like 432. It keeps me real peaceful. 555 is a good one, too. I just kind of have that really low on my speaker, and that allows me to just kind of zone out a little bit. You can also listen to white noise, pink noise, just some kind of like frequency that's going to keep you nice, cool, calm, and collected, right? In order to get better sleep and to just get out of your head, right? Because if you're anything like me, sleeping sometimes is a little hard because my thoughts are always racing, okay? But a little side tangent there is that if you're ever trying to, you know, get those thoughts in your head to, to kind of quiet down before you go to bed, a really good journaling exercise that I like to do is called brain dumps. Or this is like a thing that I do, do called brain dumps. It's where I set a timer on my phone for about 15 minutes. And I just write as much as I possibly can about what how my day was, what I want to do in the future, where am I just I just let everything from my head, I put it on my little notion template, and that allows me to just clear up my head, clear up my mental RAM. That way when I go to sleep, I can just finally relax and just call it a day. Okay. So hopefully those five tips helped you out, guys. A bonus tip that I want to share with you all is that when it comes down to being motivated, sometimes being unmotivated is probably justified, right? Because a lot of people that go to the gym or they try to meal prep or they try to start their fitness journey, right? A lot of people go without a plan and they really don't know what they're doing with their fitness routine, right? So a lot of people skip the gym because they know that even if they were to go, they wouldn't know what they were going to do anyway. So why even try? Why even show up, right? But thankfully, with what we do here at Basics, you know, we have quite a bit of resource that you all can take advantage of. So first and foremost, make sure that you subscribe to this channel for free content. That way you all can get new videos from me and the Basics team every single week on fitness, nutrition, and self-improvement. Secondly, if you want to join an exclusive community, you can check out the first link below and join the Feast Mode to Beast Mode community. It's a brand new thing that we're doing to where we are, where we're gathering and we're trying to locate as many forward-thinking men as possible that are trying to up-level their fitness, get in better shape, build their confidence, and just become better overall men as a whole in order to just unlock new levels of greatness within themselves, right? Because I was there, I've been overweight, I've been in shape, and I'd rather be in shape every single day out of the week, no matter how hard it was for me to get there, right? So just understand that suffering for what you want is much better than suffering because you didn't get what you want, if that makes sense, right? And last but not least, if you're someone that wants VIP coaching, go ahead and click the second link below and you can go ahead and book a free 15 minute game plan call with myself personally to where we can discover whether or not you'd be a good fit for one of our online coaching programs. In one of these corners, I'll be plugging Joel Sadiq's fitness transformation. He, we're probably going to be doing another one with him very shortly. Uh, you know, he's a busy nurse based out of Philadelphia. He had an awesome fitness transformation with us. And if you're trying to be like Joel and, you know, get some coaching for myself personally, we'll customize a workout program for you, meal plan, and hold you accountable 24-7 with group coaching calls, tech support, and a private community, go ahead and book a free 15-minute game plan call so we can discover whether or not it would be a good fit for you. So thank you all for watching. And if no one's told you in a minute, I'll tell you right now, it's time to get your shit together, man. See ya.